Hey guys. What's up y'all? What's poppin'? I'm in fucking Tampa, Florida. We just fucking... We just fucking tore the roof off. The goddamn Jingle Ball. With um, Sam Smith and Normani. Very, very fun. I love Sam Smith and Normani. They are so cute on stage together, too. And I'm going live because I'm just trying to see what's up. So what's up? What's up, motherfuckers? Yeah, I'm still in Florida, but I'm literally about to leave. I'm about to go to Texas, boy. About to be up in Texas, you feel me? I'm eating a veggie burger. It's kind of fire. It's like a fucking black bean patty. I know all your songs by her. And word by word, I'm 10 years old. You know all my songs? You know all my songs by her? Do you know Better in Color? Loved you on the bunny ears. <laughs> I love Mac too. Okay, if you know all my words, sing the words to Better in Color right now. <laughs> so, some of y'all were at the Tampa show. Um, did y'all enjoy it? One of you said, I liked when you said heck instead of hell. Mm hmm. How's it feel being on stage? It feels interesting. So, I have like a interesting, like, I have an interesting performer mechanism where I can, I'm like multitask a lot on stage. I don't know if everyone's like that. I would like to talk to other performers. But I'd be up there thinking about so much shit. I'd be up there like thinking about what I'm about to eat. Sometimes I'm up there thinking about just one person in the crowd and looking at them and wondering like what their day was like, you know, how they're feeling right now. So, sometimes I have these moments where I'm just overwhelmed by everybody and it's such a beautiful feeling and I can feel so much love and I'm like, wow. Like, every time I sing, because I love you, I allow myself to feel the emotion of everybody. You know what I'm saying? And it just, over I get overcome with love. And then sometimes, during songs, I'm thinking about Something that don't even have anything to do with the song. I'd be miles away or I'd be like looking out at the crowd like, I don't know. So it feels good. It's It feels incredible. But I also can sometimes tune into other things, I guess, when I'm on stage. I can like tune out. All right. You're my favorite person. I love you guys. I really do. I just had this feeling of like, damn. All of y'all have been so supportive and so sweet. 
Like, I just, I've been posting my naked body for a long time. If you're a long time follower, you'll know. Now, I'm not afraid of no nude, you know? But I just realized, you know, I got like so many followers now. I got millions of followers on both Instagram and Twitter. Um, it's not the same when I had like, you know, 10,000 followers or even 20,000 followers where I could post a picture of my naked booty and it kind of feels still private. This shit getting reblogged and people are painting it and I understand that my body type isn't the um, body type that you're used to seeing in mainstream media and you guys are so positive and supportive and so sweet and um, you lift me up and you, you root me on, you know. Um, and I've noticed that lately and I just want to say thank you because there's a lot of evil on the internet and there's a lot of negativity in the world. And you guys, you guys just shine a light and you, you blast through that bullshit and I fuck with y'all for that. Who was your celeb crush? Mm. You know what's crazy, y'all? I used to have crushes on famous dudes. But now I don't. They're kind of like... weird I don't know it's like every famous dude I've had a crush on I've talked to not romantically but in some form or fashion I've conversed with them um I don't think I like famous guys I like really low key, out of the spotlight kind of guys. You know? So anyway, I did have fun tonight. So you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> Absolutely. I feel like I would more than likely end up with a guy. I would end up with a person that isn't famous. Like, maybe in the industry because, you know, I need somebody who understands my lifestyle. So maybe it's... You know, I'm into writers and, like, sound engineers, you know? The real nerds. But I'm not into the famous dudes. What about the baby? Mmm! The baby is different. The baby is. He's just like. Cool man. And so. To me. Is very. Respectful. And like a gentleman. And. Chivalrous. Even. You feel me? Like. He will take care of his people and he will take care of his woman I know that for a fact but I don't think we have a romantic thing what do I do I'm pregnant you got any tips 
I have never, I've never been pregnant. Um, what do you want tips on? I have a friend who's pregnant right now, Ashley Graham. Um, she can probably help you better than I. Mm, this is so good. Um, what is your dream collaboration? Well, the person that I would really love to work with is Adele. I would love to work with Adele. I just feel like she and me. Why didn't you sing Juice tonight? I'm salty. Bro, so let me tell you. I be try I'm trying to cram everything in. I want us to do juice too. I want us to do juice and I'm so upset because not upset. It's fine, but it's just I got a good problem. I just have so many songs that I want to do. Like, I, I want to do Truth Hurts, and I want to do Because I Love You, and I want to do Good As Hell. Good As Hell and Truth Hurts on the charts right now. Water Me is climbing up the charts because of Walmart. Um, I really wanted to do Soul Made so I could twerk for y'all. I really wanted to do... Um, um, tempo. I love Nicki Minaj. I love Nicki Minaj. Mm. Keep touring so I can come and see you. Listen, boo. <laughs> what about Rihanna? I love Rihanna. Bro, Rihanna... Call me. All she gotta do is call me. She know where to find me too. She know where exactly the fuck to find me. I love Cardi B. You fucking kidding me? Cardi. Bitch, I don't know what that was. But I think it was outside my room. Oh, bro, a song with the city girls? That'd be fucking sick. I would love the city girls. The city girls... They make the kind of song that, like... They really speak to... This generation. Like, when I hear any city girl song, I immediately stand up. Like... I was at the box in London and I was sitting most of the time because, you know, it's one of those things where you watch the performances. I heard real ass bitch give a fuck about a nigga. I stood up on the couch and in the booth and the security was like, it's fine, it's fine. It just makes you want to get up. I don't know. Ariana Grande, I love her. We have good as hell though together. I want to do a new song with her. Um, so bad, so bad. She's so fun to write with. She's so talented. She's so talented. She's so hands on. She vocal produces herself and does her own vocals. Like that's so. I can't do that. She knows how to do Pro Tools and all of that. Hey, G. 
Mm. Lady Gaga. Love her. There's honestly nobody that I don't like. I'm going to keep it real with y'all. I'm a friendly ass bitch. I like everybody. Even the people y'all think I don't like, I like. And, you know, I don't got to be a fan of somebody to like them. You know what I mean? Ain't nobody do nothing to me. Good night, ASAP. What's the best song that you like that you made, please? Bro, I don't know because I just, I love my song so much. I love because I love you. I love that fucking song. I don't know what it is. I love Soulmate. Something about that song, Soulmate, just gets me going. Girl, why you on live? What did I miss? See, every time I'm on live, it's always because I got backlash or something. And this is why I'm doing this, because I don't want you to think I'm always on damage control. Sometimes I just want to look at y'all and talk to y'all. I'm sorry. Collab with Billie Eilish. Billie is, she, she's serious. I wonder what that song would sound like, though. Uh -huh. What would a Billie Eilish Sorry I did all the fucking Food on my teeth What would a Billie Eilish Lizzo song sound like Cause she's got like, our voices are so different. Please collab with Beyonce. Like that's just something I can do. <laughs> Hi, Ambie. Flute and Feelings. That's my next album. Spooky Bop. Yes. I would. I've already collabed with Missy Elliott. Go listen to my album. Or if we could go back in time and change one thing, what would it be? Mm. I will go back and change the way that we produce energy so that we wouldn't be like literally destroying the planet right now. I will go back in time and be like, hey, how about we use green energy or solar power or Would you help the needy? Yes. I'm literally, I want to help the needy so bad. So, I believe it or not, when you guys see artists and it looks like, you know, they pop in and they have all these cool clothes and stuff, you think they have a lot of money. And in a lot of cases, that's true. But for newer artists, it takes a while for them to get money because I'll explain it. Because it takes a long time to actually start saving that money. And you gross a lot because, you know, you make like a huge amount of money from a show. Or you get like a huge check from a deal. But that money is allocated so many ways. It goes to the label. It goes to your team, your management, travel. Which is really fucking expensive. Not to mention when you got when they got signed to the label or whatever, they have some they have shit they need to pay back because you know you take out a loan to promote your album and to 
you know, shoot your videos and you got to pay it back. So for the first couple years, you might see an artist on top of the world and, you know, wearing the designers and shit. But to actually have wealth, it takes a while. You have to really get into saving your money. And I have a lot of people on payroll. So yes, I'm living more comfortably now. I'm not sleeping in my car and I'm not eating oodles and noodles and I'm not getting, you know, little uh, party pizzas for two ninety nine, dollars um, which were fucking fire. Oh, they were so good. And I would put them in the microwave oven. I wouldn't put them in the microwave so it would get crispy and I would add an extra cheese to it. That shit would last me all day. But anyway, but I am in a better position. But once I start actually developing my wealth and retaining a lot of my money, which is happening now, thank God, I want to give back so badly. Like, like I, I know that I wasn't given this privilege and this, you know, position for no reason. Like, I want to help people who were like me. Is it better to be independent or with a label? Well, it depends on who you are. <laughs> Collab with Alex Mayo. <laughs> I think some people are better off independent, especially if you have all the resources. Like, if you got somebody to distribute your album and, like, if you've got, like, a really good agent and a manager, being independent works depending on the level that you want to get to. And then you can be on an indie label which is still smaller, but they'll support you. And you can be on a major label. I knew that my music specifically had to be distributed to the world because I was specifically making music for positive change and to help people and help myself. So I did what I had to do. But if you just love making music and you just wanna tour and you just wanna be creative, Sometimes being on an indie label or being independent is the move. Collab with Ariana's dog. <laughs> Bitch, let me tell you something about Toulouse. I be putting pictures of that motherfucker as my wallpaper sometimes. Mmm. Y'all, this veggie burger is so good. I've already donated to Planned Parenthood. Um, but I gotta do a little bit more research. Like, I own charities, but I'm a very direct type of person too. So I like to help the individual. So sometimes it's a black bean burger. It's not impossible burger. So sometimes I'd like to literally on some God's plan shit, like walk up to somebody and be like, yo, I heard you need tuition for school. Here's tuition for school. You know, instead of like, I don't know, filtering it through a charity, which I'm super down with as well. I'm down with both. So I'll probably do both. Your makeup is flawless, sis. Let me tell you, Alex, I want Alex with two X's. Y'all go to his page. He will show you how he achieves this look every single night on my phone. Because he really does a really good ass job. I'm fucking up the lip right now because I'm eating, but my makeup is always on point. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to fucking lie, bro. Mmm. Happy Vlogmas, sugar baby. 
I'm smacking hard right now because y'all keep talking about ASMR, so. I'm trying to give y'all a little bit of ASMR. You can have some. You said share? They put Parmesan on these fries. Listen, I want to collab with everybody, but I'm still on fucking tour. I'm about to go to Australia. I got SNL. We got the Grammys. Y'all excited for Grammys? But when I'm working on my album in March, I'm literally gonna, I'm gonna go live like every fucking night. Just to see what's up with y'all. See what the climate's at. I'm so excited about new music. And I'm so excited about collabing, but I can't even really collab right now. I can't wait to come to Australia and I can't wait to be hot as fuck. I'm fucking freezing. Yo, I can't wait to play the Sydney Opera House. Bro. First of all, I know who this Peaches girl is that y'all keep saying I look like. <laughs> Let me tell y'all something. The internet is undefeated. Y'all think I don't see what the fuck y'all be saying, but I see that shit. Y'all not slick. <laughs> Guess what, bitch? Peaches is cute and so am I. So you can suck both of our clits. Do you like the baby Yoda? Mm hmm I love baby Yoda. Yeah. Do you like being famous? Mm. Well, it has its perks, but hmm. it isn't. It isn't something that makes you happy. Fame doesn't make you happy. I think fame is something that will only make you happy if you're already happy. Fame just adds a spotlight to your life already. And it, everyone's now staring at you, so if you needed to wipe your ass when you weren't famous, no one was looking at you. So you could feel however you wanted to feel about it. Now that you're famous and you want to wipe your ass, everyone's looking at you. So how you going to do it? You know what I mean? You're going to wipe the toilet paper around your hand. You're going to wad it up in a little ball. You're going to use a wet wipe. You're going you, you're gonna to be naked. You're going to be... That's my metaphor for it. It's like everybody's looking at you do every little incy wincy thing. And they all going to have an opinion about it. That being said, you can wipe your ass on a golden toilet with a, boot, with a, with a bidet wearing couture. And everyone's going to look and be like, oh, she even wipes her ass glamorously. So... I think because I am a glamorous bitch and I am, you know, happy with my life and my relationships and, <clears throat> you know, I can handle attention, fame is not detrimental to my joy. It is just an extra personality trait now. It's like, oh, that's Lizzo. She's funny, stubborn, practical, likes to laugh, 
and just famous. <laughs> so it's whatever. I only started actually saying I was famous until I, I would, it was like recently. I realized I was famous after the VMAs for sure. After Truth Hurts went number one, way after. It was like Halloween around that time. I told my therapist, I was like, I guess I'm famous now. Your hair is gorgeous. That's Shelby Swain. Go to her Instagram, it's the Shelby Swain. And I am a Taurus. I'm a Taurus, Virgo, Moon, Leo rising with a Gemini Venus and a Aquarius Mars and a Leo Lilith. I'm trying to get this lipstick off my lips. I, was, I ate it off. Do you have any advice for teenage girls? Um, when I was a teenager, I was pressed. I could not wait for high school to be over and I thought that high school would never end. Um, I couldn't wait to like be who I was gonna be. And also my body changed a lot, a lot. And everyone's body changes, you know? And my body was different than my mom and my sisters. Like, I have more hair. My sisters never shaped her legs. My older sister and my mom, I don't think shapes either. Like they don't really grow hair and I'm pretty hairless too, but I have a little bit more hair than them. So I was like, no one taught me to shave. <laughs> So I'm just as hairy as shit <laughs> in gym class. And the girls were like looking at me, making fun of me. I was just a little different. And if you're a little different, or even if you don't think you're a little different, and if you are a teenager, just know that there's this whole person that you're becoming. I thought that I knew everything and I thought I knew who I was, but I only knew the beginning of what was going to make me become the person I am today. And I had band and I had really good friendships and I still have some of those friendships to this day. So just know that you're creating your future right now. You're not in your future, you're creating it. And um, these are the building blocks of who you're gonna be as a grown ass woman. Um. So whatever you like to do, do it. Because right now you live in a home and you don't pay rent and you go to school and you've, your responsibilities are homework, staying alive and being respectful to whoever's taking care of you, right? <sighs> Enjoy that and do the things that you love to do. Don't wait. If you love to sing, sing. If you love to write, write. If you love to exercise, exercise. If you love to explore, explore. If you love to cook, cook. If you love to do makeup, do makeup. Like do what you love to do right now before you have all of these other responsibilities come in and you don't get to really enjoy it. And then if you really, really love doing it and you do it enough, that could be your fucking job. So that's what I would say to a teenage girl. How do I tell my parents I wanna sing versus get a job? Well, I don't know because I definitely had to get so many jobs. I worked, my first job I was 16 and I worked at Raising Cane's Chicken Tenders and it was the opening store, the first store outside of Louisiana. It was in Houston and I was like, I got a paycheck now. I can buy my own sneakers. And then after that, I worked um, at a restaurant. I worked at La Peep, a breakfast restaurant. I was a waitress. I worked at a bar. I was a bartender. Um, I worked at 
McCormick and Schmick. I worked for Cirque du Soleil. I've worked at Dillard's in uh, First Colony Mall at the makeup counter. I've worked fucking everywhere. So, um, and I wanted to sing. So I feel like it's less about telling your parents that and more so about just doing it. Just sing. You can do, you can, you can work a job and also sing, you know, but I think if your parents want you to get a job, you should be like, why? Is it because you want me to pay bills or do you want me to move out and be independent? What do you want me to do? Because I'm still going to sing. <clears throat> How do you handle heartbreak? Hmm. <sighs> You know, you just feel it. You just have to feel it. Like, good night, drop it low. And you have to, you got to feel all the pain. I felt pain for a long time. I would go to sleep crying. I would wake up crying. I would feel my chest and just. But what I didn't do was try to push it away. And what I didn't do was try to bury it or hide it or lie about it. A lot of people would be like, just get over it or just forget about them or stop talking about it to your friends. They're sick of hearing you talk about it. Nah, if your friends don't wanna hear you talk about it, then get another friend and talk about it or talk to yourself or go on the internet and talk about it or write it down or talk to your family if you can. You have to allow yourself to feel. And the more you allow yourself to feel, I think the easier it's gonna be, but it, it just takes time. Heartbreak takes time. There's no cure, there's no answer. And I think the longer you postpone the mourning of that relationship, because it's the loss of a relationship, it feels like, you know, they died. You have to mourn it completely. And then time will pass and you'll be happy again. I gotta wash my hands. I got burger on my hands. I'll be right back. I'm back. <laughs> you can hear the water. Do I wash my hands longer than most people? Go pee. Ugh. Ugh. Woof, why did you just cry for three hours? If you want to talk about it. Hmm. Hi. How do you feel about making so many people happy? Um, no, I'm gonna wash my face. Trust me, I'm not falling asleep. I'm just doing a live with you guys. Um, um, I don't know. I don't think it's really sunk in. I think that I. it's hard for me to accept that and to believe that that's what's happening i don't know it's weird I, it makes me happy if you if you tell me and if you tell me individually how i've made you happy like 
that makes me happy but i don't think about myself making so many people happy i don't think about my effect um like in mass i think about it as an individual i'm better at one-on-one -on -one. i'm better at somebody coming up to me and being like you help me and i can be like damn that's great because i sure helped myself <laughs> i really did where you get all this confidence from bro maybe i get it from my daddy maybe i get it from like my my confidence i have i started by being really confident in my talents like i was a very confident flute player very confident i just knew i would get the solo i knew i would be first year i knew i could whoop your ass in flute and i think that having a conf like having like a confidence in something that concrete at such a young age i think just helped me have confidence in other areas like I really had to learn how to be confident in my body and my face and my voice, but good night. I know it's getting late. Do you like the Good Burger movie? Yes or no? Yes. There's soap in my nail. <laughs> Crying over a boy like a solid month. Your song is good as hell. Literally helped me. Bro, let me tell you. A month? Bro. You're doing good. I'm proud of you. Because, to be honest with you, like... Sometimes it can take a year. So... Give yourself, give yourself the opportunity to be sad, but also be aware that in this moment, I'm sad. I'm sad and this feels terrible, but I know that one day I'm not going to feel this way anymore. You are not going to feel this way about that boy forever. I promise you that. That, I promise you. You may feel sad about something else or someone else, sure. But about that boy, I promise you, cry it out now because this feeling will pass. So I'm proud of you. I don't know when this turned into a, what is it? This turned into something else, y'all. Are you the next Savage Fenty brand ambassador? No, they haven't asked me, but I definitely wear the Savage brand when I can. I was about to do another little photo shoot in some Savage. Um, no, they're not even photo shoots. It's with an iPhone in my room when I'm in glam and I'm just feeling sexy. So, um, what do you do to get over a cold? <laughs> Um, first of all, I, I eat pho, pho, ginger, I know this is whack, everybody says this, but it wouldn't be cliche if it didn't work, so pho, and then ginger tea, and then manuka honey, garlic, um, put some garlic by your feet. And keep your feet bundled up because wait pho is not as good as ramen wait i i gotta challenge you on that i gotta challenge you because there's just something so clean about the pho broth that ramen broth will never Ramen broth will never, ever be on the level of pho broth. <laughs> but you know what? Go off. I fight people on this all the time because everybody likes ramen more than pho. Everybody. 
It's fine. <laughs> the broth isn't okay. Give me the salt. You know what? You you win. You guys, you ramen people, you y'all can have it. But deep down inside, y'all know there's the cleanliness of pho and you get that ginger in the broth you get the bone marrow you get the you put the um oh the basil y'all know y'all just like it because it's butter thank you my pho people I'm an African about to Google what the hell pho is. Pho is a Vietnamese soup. And it's a broth. And then you get traditionally, I, I, I think it's it's like tripe or the beef. Um, and you throw the raw beef in the boiling broth and it cooks in it. And then you can put the rice noodles and there's jalapeno and there's basil and there's bean sprouts and like mm, it's just fire it's so good and I eat it when I'm sick alright I'm having fun with y'all I came in here contrary to popular belief I didn't come in here on some damage control shit cause I know I normally do lives when I'm explaining myself or something has happened on the internet or if I get backlash, but I just wanted to come in here and just thank you guys, all y'all for the support and you know, for understanding me and for sending positive energy my way because there's so much negative energy on the fucking internet. There's so much and I have like a bullshit filter, so I don't really see it all. Thank God. But I get little hints of it here and there. But for the most part, I have an overwhelmingly positive, supportive um, group of followers. All, however many million of y'all, thank fucking you. Because this is what the internet is all about. It's about being kind to each other, uplifting to each other, and supportive, and rooting each other on, and sending dick pics, and commenting purple heart emojis, and tongue out emojis, and emojis, like that's what the internet is all about, not the fucking vomit emoji, not the fucking clown emoji, not the fucking trash can emoji, we can be better to each other you know what i'm saying not saying that i receive those emojis because i don't but i've seen it i've seen it on the internet and it's just it's hurtful like you have a choice you have a choice to make somebody's day better and impact them in a positive way or you have the choice to make somebody's day shit and a lot of us can handle a vomit emoji or two but some of us, it really, really deeply affects us in a negative way and it really hurts our feelings. And you can't really know who you can trigger. So it's like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? So I wanna thank y'all for being a positive group of people on the internet and y'all are gonna be the ones to save the world cause Lord knows. It's not going to be the trolls. I'm smacked, but what is she talking about? <laughs> Take your ass to bed. Okay, y'all. I don't know what I'm going to wear to the Grammys yet, but it will be fabulous. Um, The Grinch can't handle throw-up emojis. <laughs> Who is the Grinch? And no, he probably can't. The Grinch was definitely emotionally unstable. That motherfucker was very, very traumatized as a child. I don't know if y'all saw the Jim Carrey version, but he was traumatized as a motherfucking child and ostracized, treated like shit. So yeah. Anyways, I'm excited for the Grammys. I don't know what I'm gonna wear, but which I think I should wear. Should I show like 
show some skin. I feel like I'm going to be very, like, I don't know. No, I don't know what I'm going to be like. It depends on the, on the designer. I know, I feel like I like my lips right now too, y'all. Because I'll be feeling like my lips are on the small side. But tonight they're looking kind of juicy. <laughs> they're all fucked up from the makeup. Alright, well. Good night. Sleep tight. Don't let the trolls bite um take a big purse for the grammys i'm just gonna show up in a fucking purse <laughs> i'm gonna put some wheels on a purse and just roll into the red carpet like scarf oh i love you guys i don't want to leave i don't want to leave but i love you guys <laughs> Step out of a purse. <laughs> Y'all fucking stupid. Mm. I wish I was smacked. No, I don't. I'm not drinking right now, y'all. I'm sober. I told myself I wasn't going to drink until SNL. Aw. I love y'all. I'm about to get off. Even though I don't want to. But I'm going to save this live, and you know I never do, but I'm going to save it so you guys can check it out and do a recap on some of the things we touched on today, if it meant anything to you or jumped out to you. Um, Yeah. Happy holidays, everybody. Every single fucking holiday. Happy holidays. And I might go live because I'm going to put up a tree. I've never put up a tree before. So I'm going to go live and do that. So I'll see you then. Bye. <laughs> I'm going to wash my makeup off. Don't worry. Bye, bitch. <laughs>they want to know how i get money like the congress it's because i move weights like big boys on bench press i keep it piled up at a foreign address so it's no stress when feds fuck with the process you know it's on serving up methadone while the season put the dome and i keep a load of chrome paranoid never deal via telephone i gotta stay in the zone bump it to some brownstone my girl just told me that i got another order another thousand worth to sneak across the border my down bitch always by my side you're looking at the new business bonnie and clyde you know I love you little DSLs Every time you go down got your boy on swell Hit the streets I got rocks to sell And if I get caught then my bitch got the bell I keep a type in LOL And I never miss a call when you hit the cell My ride or die ready to cock the shell Uh, the daddy, the daddy, the daddy do you well